Well, thanks a lot for staying with us here on Sunrise Live on E! As we continue with the conversations this morning, now according to Statistics South Africa, the population of people living with disabilities in South Africa is just over 7.5%, and that represents about 2.9 million people. Now, people living with disabilities in South Africa are often faced with various challenges, especially when it comes to the access of quality education, discriminatory practices, as well as human abuse, and this is just to name but a few. So, as we conclude Youth Month, this week we take a look at how how is it that young people who are living with disabilities are celebrating their role in society, but most importantly, how are they overcoming certain challenges that have been placed upon them? So joining me this morning to talk to me about the matter is the chairperson of the Disabled Youth South Africa, Siabulela Lucas, and we invite you at home to be part of our conversation. You want to be part of this one. Give us a call on 011-447-1742, alternatively 1620. And remember, you can find us on Facebook as well as on Twitter. Siabulela Bulela, lovely to have you this morning. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Wait, how are you, man? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very thanks. well. You know what, what is so beautiful is that me and you were just sharing a little bit about your story. Yeah, and I want us, before we go into the issues around what young people are, are, are faced with, I want to talk about your story. You were not born blind. I mean, you're 100% blind now, but you were not born blind. What's your story? What happened? Yeah, no, Faith, first of all, let's start at uh, persons with disabilities before uh, persons with living with disabilities, you know? Yeah. But basically, Faith, you know, I'm a victim of attempted suicide, you know? At mm. the tender age, I was just, uh, just about to complete my matric, you know, in 2001. Mm. So for me, that's been a life-changing experience, which is I actually enjoy actually motivating other young people to the mainstream business I'm gonna go into as well, to motivate young people pre-stage of uh, attempted suicide to find out what the issues are yeah. and even post stage in terms of post suicide in order to strengthen our communities out there because there are many social ills that actually affect us you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. in terms of um, the way of thinking and uh, a strong way to go into it is to strengthen the power of the mind yeah. because no one can take that away from you and the are power we allowed of to share heart. how how what the attempted suicide was yeah yeah you, okay. so you, you you shot yourself yes yes actually i did um faith you know uh, the bullet went in from my right temple that's mm -hmm. your left okay to my left eye that's your right okay so it's an entry and exit wound you know so but with the power of the lord I'm here now, you know. Yes, it's true. You're here yes. now and you're able to represent uh, persons with disabilities there and Thanks, educate Kate. many of us about some of the, the challenges that are being faced, etc. So let's talk about, uh, now, it's, it's a lot of times we're very naive, yes, should I yes, say, yes. as able-bodied individuals yes. um, to what the realities are when it comes to, for example, access to education. Yes. You were blind just before you completed your matric, which means that you had to endure the educational aspect of it, about how yes. then do I start capacitating myself? What are the realities? that people or persons living with disabilities are faced with when it comes to access to education? First of all, um, Faith, I'll actually tell you that the first real hurdle that you have to get over mm. is the attitudinal barrier, saying that oh, yeah, the majority of people um, with disabilities actually are not able to have a successful life in terms of education. That's not correct. Mm. We've got many of our comrades who are qualified in the vast um, different aspects of our careers, you know. But the issue there is that now they say that, for example, you can't expect to have a personal disability to run like you said, Bolt, you know? Yeah. But through their disability, they actually concentrate more on their abilities and unleashing them out. And then you get a close guy like maybe Oscar Pretorius coming in a close second, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that's the first one. Furthermore to that, the assistive devices that we should desire are very costly, you know? For example, the screen reading software for visually impaired, I would say the Dragon for our quadriplegic complex, you know? And also the um, screen enlarger for our, I would say, uh, partially sighted comrades. And yeah. in terms of also the access to these educations for our um, wheelchair users and our physically disabled comrades. That's the first part, access to the training or to the learning venues or to the classrooms. access to the tools that would allow you guys to capacitate and be able to operate effectively like any normal yes, person yes, in that's society. What we usually say that it's not us who are disabled. Mm. The environment disabled disables us. Repeat because that, it's not us, us who, who are, are disabled. disabled. It's the environment. environment that makes us disabled. So how do we start changing that environment? And I'm gonna say this because your work is phenomenal. I mean, I mean, you work in the financial sector, you also impart 
uh, part of the Employment Equity Forum, and we're going to be speaking about the realities now in the workplace. But how then do you start changing that environment so that persons living with disabilities do not feel as though they're second-rate citizens, which is most of the time the part of the complaint? Yeah, you see, Faye, thanks for that. Eh? Uh, but it starts, I think it's an information system, if I can say, to have input processing and output. Mm. Because if you want to address the employment equity targets mm. in the workplace, you have to start from early childhood development. That's where the access goes in part that you were talking about, the assistive devices where you have to use. And then going into primary, high school, and tertiary levels with the assistive devices. So we as disabled youth, one of our programs that we've embarked on is to actually collect or revisit the info that is available so that we can actually ascertain how many persons with disability are employed, how many are contract workers, how many are running their own business, so that we can actually go to the deep senses that in our education system, mm. we get to the rural areas to find out what are their interests, what are their challenges as youth with disability, so that it links into their line of career they follow. Might it be in full-time employment or running their, um, their own businesses, and then that will actually set them free. So the main challenge there is the one of the attitudinal barrier. Yeah. Second added to that, it's the funding to make our schools or our learning institution accessible. Third, also on the funding, which is, funding is quite a big impact because we can collect the data as disabled youth South Africa, but we need to be also be funded to go to those far-fetched places in the deep rural areas of the Eastern Cape, KwaZulu Natal, Limpompo, all over the country, to actually find out what their challenges are in an organized mm -hmm. format, collect the stats, present it in a way, and then we can have an integrated plan of action working together side by side with our government and our state on parastatals and such. Well, you know? we're definitely going to be continuing this conversation this morning. We invite you as always to participate with us. Remember that number to dial is 011-447-1620. And also you can uh, find us on our social media pages. That is uh, Facebook as well as uh, Twitter. Now, it's it's... The work that you guys do as uh, Disabled Youth South Africa is phenomenal. As you're saying that you're into the data processing and the, some of the issues is that you do need the, the funding. But on the positive side, what are some of those good stories that you can tell as a result of being able to formalize and be able to carry out some of your objectives? Basically, I would say the first part is that organizing ourselves into an organized structure. Mm. Therefrom, we link into from our national to our provincial to our local and districts. Yeah. So there we collect, we organize persons with disability, no matter what type of disability is, when an umbrella body, you know. Therefore, you can get now a full vision of the uh, persons with disability landscape as to what are the individual challenges per disability, and then put and them you into guys one. And you collect all of that data. That, you collect all of that data. Yeah. That's where now we can be able to um, engage with our government especially our private sectors also need to come on board. Yes, our financial institutions have tried, some of them, you know. Mm. So under that banner with government and private sector, then we can say, okay, this is what we've identified as disabled youth South Africa. Mm. How can we work together with your resources? This is our environmental challenges. These are our values. How can we get a formula for success going? Yeah. Yes. How do we get a formula for success going in the workplace? Because I mean, and as I said, I'm going to touch on this because you do sit when it comes to employment equity on the employment equity forum in itself. And yes. various challenges have been articulated about, you know, the, the barriers that are prohibiting persons living with disabilities from being able to function optimally in their jobs um, within the various institutions because people are simply ignorant. Yes. Talk to us about some of those challenges. Now, as I mentioned before, that first part is that attitude, no barrier. We yeah. need to get over that. Second added to that, yes, we are youth with disabilities, but you have to understand where the source of the problem was. Mm. Majority of our persons with disability have an issue of getting whatever their skills are on the recognition of prior learning. So one of the um, if, um, initiatives we started to formalize that sector, first of all. Second added to that, that's to inform that our youth with disability now make informed choices in terms of in, um, enlarging our skills base, mm. getting education in the skills levels or the skills areas that are required in the country. Also not to say that we do not have current skills. Currently we do have, but it's that attitudinal barrier in order to address our DTI targets and so forth. So that's the integrated strategy we're coming with as disabled youth. And then if we can sort out those things and sit together and work together, and then we'll go forward. Another part is the willingness to 
take on persons with disabilities, especially youth, because it's a large part of our population in our country. How is, gonna country, how is our country going to go forward if we don't give our youth with disabilities job opportunities? Or they can get to exercise their own businesses. Yeah. So now the issue there is the willingness to absorb, not on endless learnerships or contract, full-time employment, certificates, or certificates, yeah. full-time employment, yeah. and we want to... Who says that my fellow comrade who's sitting in a wheelchair cannot be CEO of a company? 